All right. Second Chronicles chapter 15. And then so that I can save some power in my voice, I want uh, Brother Sean, do you, uh, I know you're doing tech, but do you have a Bible open that you can read it? Can you read verse 1 through 8 loud for us to hear, please? Thank you. while ye be with him. And if ye seek him, he will be found of you. Amen. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. Amen. Now for a long season Israel hath been without the true God, and without a teaching priest, and without law. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel, and sought him, he was found of them. And in those times there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in. But great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. And nation was destroyed of nation, and city of city. For God did vex them with all adversity. Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak. Amen. For your work shall be rewarded. Amen. Amen. And verse 8 as well, too. And when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Oded the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin and out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim and renewed the altar of the Lord that was before the porch of the Lord. Thank you, brother. Now in this passage, King Asa... He was at a time of conflict and evil and literally at the end of the world for the children of Israel. It's interesting when the Bible talks about the coming of the Lord or something apocalyptic, some of that did apply to the nation of Israel during their time when they lost their nation. So that's why sometimes scriptures can go double application. But aside from that, the point is this, is that they were like at their own time of apocalypse, so to speak. They were like at their end game. And to be honest, it did happen. That nation was gone. They went away to Babylonian captivity. And even though they were able to rebuild later on, we know that later on they fell away and lost their nation. And then it wasn't until the 1900s that they can get back into place. We are at a time of much confusion and evil in our nations. And we're like entering the end game. And we are like at an apocalyptic time period, so to speak. I cannot tell you that the rapture will be tomorrow, but I can tell you this, what Christians have always said. It's going to be very soon. It's very, very soon. And we always have to have that mindset that it will happen very soon, that it can happen any moment. And that if we have that kind of mindset, we would also have the mindset that the nation is also reaching at its peak and at its end point too. So during this time, what Christians should be doing is to not be discouraged and have a doomsday type of yeah. thinking and think that there's nothing they can do for the Lord, but that rather at verse 8, to take courage. You need courage. You cannot be weak at this time. That's right. You thought that during the 90s and 2000s or 60s, 70s, 80s, during the golden days, that you could be weak and relaxed, right? Because you got all these great preaching and preachers and churches to fire you up and rev you up. And then we got an economy and a time period that was better at that time. But you got to realize that you can't be weak anymore. And you got to be on your guard. And there are preachers falling, churches clothing, uh, closing, and then Christians backsliding and becoming worldly. And the world is getting worse and worse. And this is a time that you can't be the same you anymore, and you're like wondering what happened to our world? Why are things getting worse? Why can't we go back to the golden days? You got to realize that's a time that you cannot be weak, but be strong in the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the title of my preaching today. One word, courage. Amen. One word, courage. Let's pray. Father God, fill within me Holy Spirit power and I pray that you'll give me all the strength that I need in my voice, and I pray that you'll also protect me. Uh, I'm trying to do what I can to protect my health, too. 
but uh, you put me at this situation where I just have to do and preach what you want me to preach. So give me wisdom and help me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All righty. Now, uh, we look at verse 1. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. The first thing that I want to cover, how you can take courage in these, la in these last days of the church, is to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, that's so cliche, and we hear that quite often. You know, you need to be filled with the Spirit. You need to pray for the filling of the Spirit. Great preachers back in the past, and I would hear these sermons, and it would stir my heart like I would not move and budge until I prayed to the Lord, and He would fill me with His Holy Spirit, and I would preach such sermons too. But sometimes we don't understand, we don't really understand the necessity and the importance and how to be filled with the Spirit. The problem with some of us nowadays is that we choose to where the Holy Spirit would go in and then we pursue that path thinking that we're doing a great feat for the Lord, but we don't realize that's not where the Holy Spirit was speaking or leading or guiding you. Paul didn't do that. The Holy Spirit told him, you're not going to go there. You're going to go to Macedonia. You try going against the Holy Spirit, Paul learned his lesson. He missed out a couple of years when he went to Jerusalem. You got to go where the Holy Spirit leads you. And that's the problem is that, look, you have a good mentality. You have a good heart. Like, you know, we need more street preacher. We need more soul winning. We need more Bible believing churches. We need more missions and we need to pray and all that kind of stuff. But sometimes you don't realize these are good things and we should be doing it. But sometimes where you think the Holy Spirit is in, he is not there. And he might be telling you that during your soul winning time that the Holy Spirit's leading you and you got to let that go. And you got to concentrate on your workplace to provide for your family. That sure don't sound spiritual, does it? It could be vice versa. Concentrating so much, preoccupied on work, and the Holy Spirit says, no, 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 you need to, I know you're trying to get enough money to help out the church and give offering. No, you need to go out soul winning. Yeah, You've been too lazy. Amen. You know what your problem is? Your problem is you're choosing where the Holy Spirit will lead you. Yeah, yeah, right. And God forbid that this blowout is set up and designed in a way where we try to make the Holy Spirit come in rather than letting the Holy Spirit choose to come himself. Yeah. Yeah, right, man. Oh, I mean, uh, I didn't have a blowout until like 10 years later. You have to understand why the Holy Spirit said it's not time. It's not time. Sometimes uh, when you start out a ministry, you have like these golden fantasies and dreams like, man, I'm going to uh, burn up the world for Jesus Christ. And then, but then what happens is, the Lord, you go through struggles, complaints, people leaving your church, people who are not on fire. And uh, you get embarrassed when a guest speaker comes and your members aren't pumped up except the preacher. Look, I get all that. I've been through that. I don't get this in one day. That's right. I don't get all this in one day. It takes years. And I knew what it was like. I was the preacher who started out with two families. We were growing up to 30. And then within the third year, we thought we could move to a different location. Shrunk back to two people. And I thought I was backslidden. I thought I wasn't right with God. And I said, Lord, what am I doing wrong? In my fourth and fifth year, I had two people. It happens. It happens. But you know what? That's the Holy Spirit saying, hey, Gene, I need to hone you a bit more. You need patience. And you, uh, you need to develop more wisdom, maturity. It's not your time yet. Let me hone you a bit more. You know how to be strong in a wicked generation? Not, bring, not bringing back D.L. Moody and John Wesley from the dead. You know how you get, you know how you be strong in this wicked day and age? How you take courage? You go where the Holy Spirit leads you. But you're not going. You're not going where the Holy Spirit leads you. You're rebelling and you're choosing your own uh, grandiose dreams of where the Holy Spirit would guide you. And by the way, it works the other way around. Don't push away where the Holy Spirit's guiding you. Yeah, he probably wants you to have a revival meeting. Yeah, he wants you to go out so winning. Yeah, he wants you to spend time to read his word and pray and set the world on fire on some moments. Yeah, the Holy Spirit guides you. What is holding you back? Well, I need wisdom. I need maturity. 
and it's not the right... No, if the Holy Spirit tells you to go, then go. It's your problem. You're all thinking about politics and what preachers think and then how you look. And hey, I thought it's all about what God thinks. Isn't he the one that sets you up in the ministry? Isn't he the one that sets you up in the church? Isn't he the one that gets you soul saved? Isn't he the one that gave you wisdom to do the work for him? Who do you think you are? Now when the Holy Spirit guides you and says, all right, here's Berkeley. Go over there. Oh, no, God, I, uh, not over there. San Francisco street preaching list. Go over there. Sign your name in there. Man, bunch of you visitors. I don't know. I don't know what's your infatuation with street preaching in San Francisco. I see that list and no one, we can't put any more names in there. What's the matter with you people, man? When the Holy Spirit opens up an opportunity, yeah, burn because he's going to close the door. He doesn't just open, he closes doors. And when he opens a door, it's not going to a lot of times stay open. He'll probably move you to a different door direction. So if that door opens up, if I were you, I'd burn every last ounce of my energy and burn. You know how you get courage? You got to be led by the Spirit. That's why you're discouraged, because you're going all by your man-made human efforts to build up subscribers online and members into church and then trying to uh, pat old ladies, women on the back of the hand and make them feel welcome so that they can invite their grandchildren and then their daughters and then their husbands and their whole family. Yeah, that's what some of you preachers might be thinking, right, when you do that so that you can get a bigger church, you know. So then you try to do all that kind of stuff and that's your own feet. And when you do that, God will give you the church that you want. Your own feet. No wonder your church is half dead and you're discouraged because you're trusting in yourself and your ability to build a church and not the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit choose where God wants to go and then you'll get courage. And when you get small membership in the church and that's where the Holy Spirit leads you, You'll be courageous in this wicked generation. Not go like, man, I see some of these Bible-believing preachers who have big churches. Why don't I have that? What are you doing? You're going by your own plans or are you going by how the Holy Spirit leads you? Hey, that's their ministry where I led them. This is yours. So why are you discouraged about small members? Why don't you have courage and think I'm doing what's right? You know, the second thing is in uh, verse 2. <clears throat> and uh, he went out to meet Asa <clears throat> and said unto him, Hearing me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you while he be with him. And if he seek him, he will be found of you. But if he forsake him, he will forsake you. Be courageous. <clears throat> you need to hear a man of God preach to you. Yeah. Right, oh, you already know. You already know. You read your Bible. You heard sermons over again. But sometimes you need to hear it again. Amen. Yeah. You know why you're here? To get courage. How do you get courage? You need to hear preaching. Amen. You need to hear preaching that will pump you up with courage. You need some courage in you so that you can fight the world tomorrow. And yes, you need to hear it again. And I know you heard about heaven a billion times. And I know you heard about hell a billion times. And I know you heard about salvation a billion times. And I know you heard about that King James Bible a billion times. Comfort, encouragement, discouragement. And then to take courage and faith and hope, and patience, and suffering, and trial. I know you heard all that before, and then preachers have repeated something that you heard about before, but it's in a different way where the Holy Spirit will fill them, and then sometimes even though you heard the same sermon before, the second time, it just works wonders for some weird reason. Why is that? Because you need to hear it again, and you need to realize that. Yeah, I need to hear heaven a thousand times. Well, you already know that there's no tears in heaven, no depression, and then God will pay you back with rewards. You're right, I know all that, but I need to hear it again. I need to hear some preacher talk about heaven again. 
Why? Because I'm just too stupid and I'm too fleshly and I'm too weak. And even though I, uh, my flesh knows that, it's so stupid that it doesn't really know that. And I need you to repeat it again. Yeah, you need someone to tell you that you're a rotten sinner. You need some good hard preaching. You need to hear that. You need to know that you need to get right with God. Yeah, you know about that sin problem that the preacher keeps hammering on, but guess what? You need to hear them again. You need to realize separation from the world, and then you got to fight and resist the devil, and then you got to realize that that flesh needs to be crucified. Yeah, you know all that stuff. You heard it a thousand times, and you use that as your excuse to backslide because you're so used to hearing that, you prodigal son, and then you go out into the world because you're so used to hearing it. And guess what? You never opened up your heart. If you opened up your heart and if you heard that preaching the thousandth time, maybe the Lord will speak to you differently. Amen. You need to hear it again because you need to realize you're so stupid. Yeah. All right? It doesn't matter if you graduated from a university. I graduated from a university. But guess what? I'm too stupid, I realize more and more. And I need to be reminded again. I need to hear preaching that kicks my flesh i know joel osteen is wrong john MacArthur with this calvinism is wrong and i know that all these other uh, preachers out there they're wrong rick warren and all that but guess what i need to hear that again because i'm too stupid because 20 years later i might be brainwashed and say what's wrong with rick warren right. <laughs> oh you don't think that you'll be that type i know a people in bible believing churches who end up that way you might say, what's wrong? Because it takes 20 years where no one reminded you. Yeah. So yeah, you need to hear that again. Amen. Okay, let me tell you. Rick Warren, Rick Warren is wrong. Amen. Joel Osteen is a false prophet. Amen. John MacArthur's teaching on Calvinism is a doctrine from hell, yeah. and that is not of God. Yes, you need to hear it again. Yeah, yeah, you need to hear it again, some of you. Sorry, your flesh you didn't like that just now. You know why? You didn't hear that for a long time. And yeah, you need to hear some comfort. You know, some of you, oh yeah, yeah, Joel Osteen, you know, that positive preaching, you know, that, that stuff is wrong. So uh, why are you talking about comfort, preacher? Why are you talking about encouragement? I need something negative. No, sometimes you're so negative-minded, that's why you become discouraged. You need some... Something positive in there. Need some encouragement in there. Yeah. Oh, the Amons are dying out a little bit more now. Yeah. Yeah, you need comfort. You know why? In this time, that's what you're looking for. You need encouragement. You know why? In this time, some of you are looking for that. And you're like, man, I want it. Where can I seek it? You need to hear it. And the preacher will preach Psalms 23. And you go, I know that passage. But guess what? You need to hear it again. You need to know that, uh, let me tell you something. I know you know this. I know you know this. But will you hear this again? Are you discouraged? Jesus loves you. It's so simple. Jesus loves you. He cares for you. When you're feeling pain, he feels the pain because you are the body of Christ. When Paul persecuted other Christians, Jesus said, why are you persecuting me? Why? Because he's hurting the other Christians. God knows, yeah, when you're crying, when you're griping, and when you're whining, and you're all alone, and no preacher is around you, yeah, you need to, pl uh, you need to open that scripture again and read, Jesus wept. And you need to read that scripture again and say, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Yeah, you need it again. Why? Because you're too stupid, that's why. Your flesh is so stupid that you need to post a huge sign right in front of your door before you cry and whine and say, Jesus wept, or be encouraged, or weep not as Jesus said. <laughs> Maybe put that in front of your door before you go to church. Weep not. Weep not, and just remind yourself Jesus Christ patting you on the shoulder and say, weep not. I'm here for you. Yeah, your husband lets you down, your wife lets you down, the preacher can let you down, and people in the church can let you down. That's why you need to be reminded of Jesus Christ patting you on the shoulder and giving you a hug and saying, weep not. You know why? You're too stupid. That's why. Your flesh is so wicked and weak. That's why. 
So you need courage? You want some courage in you? You need to hear this again! Amen. Yeah, that's why this ain't the last preaching. You're going to hear more. You know why? You're all too stupid and you need to hear it again! Because I'm going to... I can't cover all bases. You preachers are going to have to cover for me, all right? You falling preachers got to cover my back. It's good to, and it's just natural. It's good to hear it again. Even if you don't really need it, it's good to hear it again. Why? Because Jesus Christ deserved 10,000 praises. And he's not sick and tired of hearing it again and again and again. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Look at the next verse, verse 3. Now for a long season Israel has been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. You know why you need courage? Because like in verse 3, it's going to be a long time. Everyone's hoping for normalcy again, things to go back to normal or to restore the great Philadelphian church age and to go back to the golden days. And you got to realize that it's going to be a long time of apostasy as prophesied by scripture and people forsaking God. And because it's going to be such a long time, you can't just hope for something to hand out to you to give you some kind of appeasement because then you're going to end up like these left wingers who are doing that right now. Waiting for a handout. Somebody to take care of him. Big government. And you're going to end up like that if you don't become strong yourself. And take courage. Don't wait for somebody to give you a shot of courage. You need to stir up courage yourself. You need to stir up courage yourself. Why? It's going to be a long road. Do you know that? Do you realize this is going to be a wicked day and age that we're going to live in? And if it's going to be a wicked day and age you, that we're going to li live in, you need to be strong. Amen. Strong. You can't be the way that you are. You need to be strong. Amen. You might say, why should I be strong? The reason why you need to be strong is so that you can have the strength to keep on going. And when you have the strength to keep on going, then you have the strength to keep pursuing and to keep serving the Lord and not let the world get to you and your faith deteriorate. So you need strength. And you might say, well, I need strength and how can I be strong? That's why you need to be Bible read up, prayed up, and churched up, and studied up, and blowed out, up, and blowed out, out. Very bad English. I'm an English major at Berkeley. You know what you need? That's what you need. That's where you receive your strength. You think this is the time to skip your Bible reading. This is a time that you can let prayer pass by. This is a time that you don't need to follow up and then encourage the people around you. This is not a time where you can come to church. Well, then when? When? There's a time, it's now. You might say, why? It's so wicked and it's going to be a long road ahead and that's why you need to go. You need to go and read the Bible and pray and study the Word of God. You know why you need to study? Because those Calvinists are studying right now. I know, I'm, I know what I'm talking about. In California, because of that case that MacArthur won, all the people are looking at the Calvinists now to defend the faith, to defend the churches. Why? Because they're the ones who studied up. Whereas Christians, we've been just locked up in our blessed assurance and not studying the word of God. You need to study the word and you need to preach the word. You can study so much, but then you can't even preach a lick and you can't even act it out properly. Then you'll end up like a Calvinist. They study so much, but they can't preach, man. They cannot preach, man. They can get all God's sovereignty that they want in them without their own free will. They still can't preach a lick, man. Yeah, amen. You, yeah, amen. You know what you need? You need to study up yourself. That's my point. You need to pray. You, you need to go out soul winning. You need to be more revved up. You need, to, you need to serve God harder. You need to shout harder. You need to pray harder. You need to give him your heart harder. Why? Why do I need to do that? So you can get strength. You know why you're all here today? Because you know you need strength. Good job. 
Congratulations. All right, you accomplished one job. Now after this is over, go do more. Because this is going to be a long, wicked day and age. And you need to be strong and you need to connect and you need to fellowship and then you need to stir yourself up and you need to encourage each other. And you need to pray for one another more than ever before. Why? It's going to be a long day of apostasy and evil. So you, it's not a time to be weak. It's a time to be strong. And you'd be surprised at those things. I mean, God's not asking something dramatic or some secret. It's just the same old things that you've heard before about this. If you just simply read the Bible, pray, go to church, and then serve the Lord, and then keep putting that within you, you're receiving strength. Yes, sir. And then that strength, you have enough to keep pushing on. Yes, Some of you, sadly, might come here for a one-time energy drink to get your strength in the blowout. And then what happens is then you can go out and then serve the Lord and you get on fire, but you waste it all away in the first month. So when you get on the altar, it's not permanent and it's not long. You got to think about this is going to be dangerous after the blowout. It's going to be wicked. Y'all listening to me? I know we want to shout and we want to be happy, but you got to think about this. When you get on this altar, you have to think about the world you're going to face tomorrow. And when you get on this altar, you can't just waste a one-time energy drink. You're going to say, I'm going to take sips out of this. I'm going to take it carefully. I'm not going to make foolish vows on this altar and then just set the whole world on fire and burn out in one month. I need to be serious with the Lord and say, God, I need your help. And I need your grace because I am weak. And no matter how much I dedicate, I'm still weak. So you need to help me out, God. Discipline me. Beat me back into shape. If you have to, but Lord, just, I'm, I'm being serious right here. I need strength to move on. Yes, when you get on this altar and repent of some sin and rededicate and recommit your life on something, make sure you do it right. Amen. And that you're thinking about the long road ahead. Amen. Sure. Amen. Well, uh, but... What if I fail again, pastor? Well, that's why you need to get your butt into church on Sunday. You need to be reminded again. Remember that? Yeah, you need to be preached again because that's how wicked and weak your flesh is. You need to hear that again. So don't worry. Don't worry. God's got your back. Just do what he told you to do and don't think about some secret or complicated answer. Just go to church. Go to church. <laughs> deep deep brother deep you need to go to, let me make it deeper go to church you got it now let's look at the let's look at the next verse let's look at the next verse verse 4 but when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. It's so easy to be so negative-minded in this wicked day and age, especially if you're thinking about the Bay Area, Silicon Valley, Las Vegas, and then the mission field, and then the restrictions are extremely tight over there. And then you're all one, wondering, man, it's so hard to serve the Lord. And it's so easy to be negative-minded. And it's so easy to think about, this is going to be a very wicked day and age, and it's going to be so apostate. And then you use that as your excuse, where your seeking after God has become weaker, because you're thinking about the inevitable, that it's going to be just so wicked, so why bother? Father. But you need to realize it is true, it is very true, that the whole world is going to get worse and worse, and it's not going to be a worldwide revival. But you use that as your excuse to join with the world. I thought you're supposed to be separated from the world. To join with the world and drop along with them of no worldwide revival. The whole world is, going to, uh, is, is not going to have a revival. It's going to get worse and worse. But that doesn't mean that Christians can't get better and better. Amen. Bible believers can get better and better while the whole world gets worse and worse. You ever thought about that? You ever thought about that? You ever thought about that before? I mean, uh, do you feel bad? I mean, when you're shouting, when you're singing, when you're hearing good preaching, when you get on the altar, I mean, are you all backslidden? You know, you're not fired up. You're just so laodicean. 
I mean, imagine what a great testimony today, <laughs> amen? What a great testimony today of people who just try to hit the top in a place where things are just at the lowest. Yeah. <laughs> That's a memory. That's a testimony. Amen. That's what you need to do. You need to, as that verse says, in the trouble, you need to turn to the Lord and seek after him. Right. And, he, and guess what? You'll find him. Right. But he'll find you actually a little more. You'll find that, that out a little more. And then you're going to, you need to keep searching the Lord. And if you get all pessimistic and negative, sometimes you have to ask yourself this question. Am I really seeking him? Am I really seeking him? If you did, then you can achieve a meeting like this everywhere you go. But the thing is, is that, well, you know, my church people are not like that. My brothers and sisters in Christ are not like that. My family in my home is not like that. Guess what? You're thinking about the world around you again for revival. You're not thinking about yourself. You know what? You need you yourself need to get that revival. Bless God, glory to God. I remember those times when in a wicked day and age when I go down to the University of California at Berkeley and everyone talking about questioning your gender, pulling out a paper where you can question your gender and fill out a list and people talking about protest this and Black Lives Matter that and all kinds of stuff and some idiotic street preacher gets up in Berkeley and says, you know, I'm not here to condemn you but to say Jesus loves every one of you and stuff like that in a day and age where I go inside a world like that, blare up my blowout music volume and revival and then with my bumper stickers in my car I just shout, glory to God! Yeah, yeah I got my blowout! Yeah. You think you all have to come here once a year. Man, that's depressing. Get a blowout every day. You need a blowout every day. You need to have some good hymns. You need to sing those songs. And you need to maybe run around the bases a little bit. Because some of you need a little exercise already. You're unhealthy. So maybe some of you need a little bit of that. Burn up a little fat over there. Get some energy, you know. That way you can fight the COVID, you know, with your lungs expanding a little bit more. If you shout a little louder, you know. If you want to really test your faith, put a mask on and shout, you know, while you're running around. Something like that. You need to pump yourself up. And you're like, well, that's not my personality. You can get a revival in a quiet atmosphere and just opening that King James Bible and then let the word speak to you and you bow on your knees and pray to the Lord and let him speak to you in a still, small voice. Yeah, what a blowout. But see, you're not seeking him. You're not working hard to create your environment. You're not creating your own world. You're letting the world dictate you what the world should be around you. That's why they're so brainwashed and follow whatever the world wants nowadays. You need to create your own world. And I don't mean a metaverse. And I don't mean some kind of, virtu some kind of video game. Your own world with the Holy Spirit as that power and that connector. And you don't have to pay the internet bill to the Holy Spirit. It's all free. You just need to plug it in and press the on button. Some of you are too lazy. You can't even press the on button. You're so lazy you can't pull out that King James Bible. But then it's so easy for you to turn on a screen, connect the wires, you know, and make sure the connection is working. And then if the internet doesn't work, then you call the internet company and says, man, my bill needs, I mean, uh, what's going on? I need faster connection. That's easier for you than pulling out that book. And yeah, you're the, you're the sucker in the lines on a Black Friday waiting three days to play your own world in video games. Guess what? Come to this church. We'll give you a book right here. Yeah. You, know what you're, you know what you're seeing today? You know what you're seeing today? Everyone creating a world together. That's even better than creating your own world is if you find other people who create the world with you about Jesus loves me, this I know, Amen. about heaven, about that we're not going to burn in hell, yeah. a Bible-believing truth, King James Bible, dispensationalism, preaching hell hot and sin must be kicked and the afflicted should be comforted and those who are going through suffering be encouraged. We created that world today! 
yeah, no wonder you're having a good time. You need this. Why? You need something to fight as you get weak. You need this world. Let's create this world together through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's keep serving God. All right, the next part of uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 15 right here. Notice the next verse. It covers right here in verse 5. And in those times there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in. But great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. And nation was destroyed of nation and city of city. For God did vex them with all adversity. You know, we quite often, man, I mean, I hear during that time it was cassette tapes. I know it's hard to believe with a person my age, but I listen cassette tapes. And during that time with those cassette tapes, I would hear all the preachers, camp meeting preachers, Bible-believing preachers, the independent Baptist preachers, and the fundamentalist preachers, and I would hear all of them. I went from Bob Jones Sr., and then I listened to uh, all these other preachers that I heard about, and such legends. My dad had a sh shelf full of them. And then I think it was like Hope Baptist Church in Ohio, I think that was the one that had all these tapes, actually. I don't know if some of you might know that or are familiar, but then we listened to, uh, I would listen to them during the 90s, and then I would just keep hearing them and then refresh myself and get encouraged, and I would go, wow, if we can get the days like that again. But my friend, you got to realize that it's not the 60s anymore. It's not the 70s. It's not the 80s or the 90s where it was uh, common knowledge that one out of three people would probably sh throw a chair or something. <laughs> it's, I'm exaggerating, obviously, but you know what I mean. But the point is, it's not like those golden days. Some of you preachers who are older might know this about the golden days, how it was like, and I would be so encouraged, and I would love it. Sometimes I love it when I hear these older preachers talk about what they did back then and what it was like back then. I would get so stirred up and encouraged. And I go, man, if we can have all of that, but you got to realize this is that God is not moving like in the day of Philadelphia. This is Laodicea, and the Antichrist has to come in. And you got to realize God is done with worldwide revival. And you need to realize when you get discouraged, when things are going bad in your church and bad in your life and the whole world around you, and you do everything right to create your own world of revival. But guess what? Other people aren't following that, right? And it's just you, and then you get discouraged. And you, if you're a pastor, I know this, being a pastor myself, I go, what did I do wrong, Lord? But you need to realize this. I think this might encourage you. If you look at verse 6, God is the one that vexed them with all adversity. Amen. Well, I know that, you know, uh, numbers don't really match up with the election, with what happened. As a missionary Bisco said, no, I'm not the missionary to this place that can't count. If some of you know what I mean, right? <laughs> but then we got to realize this. Yeah, I know all that kind of stuff. But you got to realize, I believe more that it's God. Gave the country exactly what it wanted and deserved. So if you were to think about that, that God's the one that allowed all this apostasy to happen and the Antichrist comes in, you cannot break the scripture. Scripture has to be fulfilled. There's nothing you can do about it. So what can I do then, preacher? You can't think about a glamorized thing about a worldwide revival. You got to think about your own revival and the people that you can affect that the Holy Spirit opened up and you need to concentrate on those things and you need to be strong on those things and not on the other things that have already made their choice to not follow along with you in your spirit world for the Lord. That's why you need to be strong. What can, what can I do? You can't bring back D.L. Moody from the dead as much as I would like to do that. You can't bring back John Wesley, Billy Sunday, but I can tell you what you can do. Just keep being strong and keep preaching in front of that small little audience and take up that King James Bible and open it up. And here you got members griping and grumbling and you're about to lose your church. And guess what? You just keep preaching that book. And even if no one comes on the altar, you keep preaching. You're the only one out there soul winning. You go out. That's, that's what you need today. 
and you feel like that, oh man, my, my life is so messed up because no one shouts along with me. No one serves God along with me. No, my friend, you got to realize it's not like the golden days back then. We're living in an electronic age and we're, looking, and we're living at a day and age where everything is fleshly and wicked and every generation gets worse. And if you study history, that's that pattern anyway. What men learn from history is that what? Right? That's how human nature is. It's repeating Genesis 6. So you know what you need to do? There's nothing you can do to change all that. But, so just keep preaching that book. Amen. Keep sowing. Create your own world of revival while the whole world goes to hell because they made their choice. Don't, uh, of course I believe in reaching them out and giving them the gospel and God can change the hardest hearts of sinners. Amen? Amen. Pastor Calvin's testimony was quite a blessing to me on that one. So you need to go, go out there. But we're not Calvinists either. God is not going to overrun free will. And he knows the free will of man. It always chooses something death at the end. Not something that's life. Nothing of the Lord. That's what you really are in human nature. And that's why you need to be strong. Some of you, when you leave this place and you go back to your home country or your state or your family, and they're all backslidden, and there's not a spiritual ounce of bone in their bodies, and then it's affecting you. That's why you need to be strong. Sure. Amen. You need to be strong. You need to have courage. Amen. If you, but I feel weak, Pastor. If you become weak, that's okay. Look at the verse. Verse 7, be strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. So I just contradicted myself right here, right? Well, let me explain the first side here. First of all, let me say what the scripture says. You cannot be weak. You cannot be weak. This is a time that you need to be strong. But we have so many men nowadays who have been feminized by this feminist world that we live in. And we become more weak and weak and sensitive and sensitive and sensitive. And then the way you preach is like this now. Some of you doubt me. Look at your preachers who backslid and who apostatize. Compare their older days, how their tone of voice was, to now. You think that sound like this? We live in that kind of a day and age now, and we cannot afford, we cannot afford weak men in the battlefield. Because in the battlefield, you need to be strong. You need to fight. Say, so why can't I be weak? Because that's what the devil and those minions are searching for. They're looking for weaker prey. Isn't that what predators do? You need to be strong. And you need to fight for the Lord. No wonder we got churches that are half dead today. You might say, well, pastor, I'm not, I, I'm not like you. And I'm not like a pastor. Are you kidding me? I'm not strong either. So what do I do? It's okay to be weak if I admit it to the Lord. God says that when I make you weak, I become strong. It's not that I make you weak to become weak. God doesn't want you weak. Whenever he gives you weakness, though, it's to make you stronger. Stronger than you're strong. I appreciate those weak moments, Lord, that you spoke to me and said, Gene, do you realize now that you're not all that? And that you're not as strong as you think you are. And that you can't win a soul and you can't preach a, a word without me. And then I just fall on my knees and say, God, I can't preach without you. And it's at that time that my preaching can become strong in the Lord. Amen. Is when I confess it to him. When some of you are so proud and arrogant and think that you have it all and that you're strong enough, be careful of that. Be careful of that. The Lord, he'll send that thorn in the flesh to teach you. And you'll realize that you're that frail little person crying in the corner and saying, God, where are you? People think I'm strong. I put on a strong face and I preach hard and people think that I'm the man of God and I can do wonders. 
I don't envy these big preachers, these big names of Bible believers. Do you realize how you don't know the weak moments that they went through and that pressure that they have, especially preaching in so many meetings? I, I don't envy Brother Calvin's ministry. Imagine a mindset of people looking up to that man as Superman. And then you have to put on that image and that testimony. But then deep down there are those moments that you're weak and frail and you're like, if only they knew I need help. That's why some pastors are ashamed to call other pastors for help sometimes. Do you realize it's at that moment of weakness that God gives you more strength? But he can only give you strength if you recognize that you're weak and he's strong. Amen. Pastor, I'm so weak, I can't be strong. Good, at least you have the right mindset compared to some preachers, sadly. At least you're humble enough to admit that I'm weak. Preachers think about it. Gotta be strong, gotta be strong, gotta be strong. Why not, what we heard in the preaching today, just be honest with the Lord. Just honest and say, God, I'm being strong in all these things, but I'll be honest, I'm weak. I need you today. 